Hello, 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 folks. It is another Tuesday train, train Tuesday. Maybe we'll get this right someday. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Everybody getting the notification. Cab Boss is live. Hello, Dave. How are you? Hello. Good. Good to hear it. Make sure I've got uh, all the prizes mailed out from the um, convention, the virtual show last weekend or whenever it was. Seems like it was years ago. Uh, other than Trudeau, if he shows up tonight, help me remember, because he has not answered my, to get his shipping address. So, if Trudeau, if you watch this later on the recording, you need to get a hold of me. C-U-S-T-S-E-R-V at Talon-Games.com, please. Oh, it has been a crazy, crazy week. Last week, going into this week, we have shipped stuff nonstop. We just finally got caught up today. We'll give everybody a couple of minutes and then we'll get started here. Move myself over a little bit. Get that slow. Cool. I'm I'm always looking forward to seeing pictures. Though it seems like uh, Terran and Rock are getting popular again. Seems like a lot of the um, faction sets and individual minis that went out last week, there was lots and lots of Terran and Rock in there. I think probably the most underserved faction is probably the Adenese. It doesn't seem like uh, as many as those go out that I would think for this, all the, because it has a lot of cool models. But hopefully we can get some other projects caught up this week and get back on track because it's been up. Crazy ride. I'm assuming everybody can hear me okay? No background noise or anything, no hissing? Good, good. Well, and here's a little secret information that I'll clue you in on for A to E's is as we move ahead, there are rumors of a civil war in the air. And a lot of people don't realize that 
the eight and E's is a combination of 10 or 11, 12, I forget the exact number of individual galactic states, I guess, for lack of a better word. So uh, they just kind of are gathered underneath the, the Confederation banner for defense and so forth, but they each maintain their own individual armies and everything, and they control their own planets and stuff like that. And in the event of a civil war and everybody kind of took sides, you could have a whole lot of sub-factions there very quickly. Which could get really, where you can, story-wise, really get into a lot of other stuff. Yeah, humans don't have to have that market cornered. We've got lots and lots planned for as we move ahead with the storyline, once we get caught up with books and minis and stuff here. I'm, I really thought 2020 was going to be the big cav year, but with everything that happened, it looks like 2021 is going to be our big push. We are very, very good at it. Oh. So, if you didn't guess already, we're going to start off tonight talking a little bit about scatter terrain, which amazingly we have a whole line for that already. If you did not get in on the third Kickstarter, um, we have lots of little bits to put down. Uh, may try to paint a couple tonight, and uh, we're going to work on our MDF building I started last week. I even remembered sandpaper. So I can clean it up a little bit as I go. And then I don't know, uh, I think... Everybody's kind of jumped in and out, but on Saturday, starting at 2 o'clock Central Time, uh, Chris, our Lewis, our sculptor, is going to be continuing to work on the Amethyl Kodiak. So if you get a chance to jump in and see how he's working and make a few creative uh, comments, make sure he's going in the right direction. It's It's... <laughs> yes, yeah, he was. He uh, has been working on it the last two weekends, but um, he's kind of dragging it out across the Saturdays so that people can see it from beginning to end, um, rather than walk, rush through and get it all done and just show you the finished product. So, um, and you can see some of the process that goes behind it just from. The first one that he started on to what it was last week because we kind of went over and more a little bit about the design and some of the looks so it's a it's a creative process that hopefully we don't kill each other over All right, I'm going to give it another minute here, and then I'm going to get started, and everybody can just play catch up, or they can watch it later. And if you have any questions as I go along, just jump in. I'm trying to kind of pay attention to the chat here while I go. And um, if not, I'll just drone on. So 
So don't, don't feel bad about interrupting. Okay, so let's talk about scatter terrain. Um, that's kind of a concept that's kind of come over from the 28 millimeter, the bigger games, but generally uh, scatter terrain are just, is basically that. It's small items that you can put on the board uh, to either make the board look better or to represent certain things such as objectives and so forth or just different kinds of little objects that you want to put in to, to um, uh, influence the battle or change the way somebody moves or something. Well, that's the whole thing. I, I mean, if you put mines down and you put them in an, an open area where people can just drive around them, they're going to drive around them. So you have two options there. Is either one, you can place mines to make them drive around them. So if you're trying to push them to one side of the board or something, uh, you can do that. Or find choke points that you know that they have to come through. Um, so that's really where mines are going to be. I mean, even in reality, if you had a field of mines, um, you know, you might get one vehicle that just happens to stumble across it. but uh, with the way things are anymore, and especially 300 years in the future, chances are they are going to know generally when there's mines about. So mines are, are much more of a control device as opposed to, to uh, um, damaging anything. I mean, that's basically the idea behind anti-personal mines. I mean, obviously, you know, if you can take out a troop or something, that's one thing, but they're really not designed to kill. They're more designed to maim somebody so that you tie up resources. You've got to get the guy off the battlefield. You've got to get the guy triaged. You've got to get the guy, you know, so there's one guy being injured can, can take up the resources for three or four other guys. So um, that's really what mines are. They're all about uh, um, control. Then, especially if you are playing, yeah, yeah, because that's that's what they're for. That's they they throw them out there and and uh, I mean, if you look at what a, a cluster bomb that delivers anti-personal mines does, I mean, those things are that big around. You know, they're not designed to do nothing but blow off somebody's foot or the bottom of their leg. And unfortunately, when those are just indiscriminately thrown down everywhere, and then after the battle, kids get around, animals get around. I mean, you know, they're still in Vietnam, they, you know, cows walking around and boom. <laughs> so, uh, and unfortunately, sometimes it gets some people. So they're, they're doing better about getting them cleaned up and not putting them down as much. But uh, now, if you're playing a game with either a GM or a good group, you know, that you can trust and you're used to playing with or whatever, then you can put minefields out. Uh, without the ability to uh, know that where they are until they land on them. So that, that's another option. So anyway, so obviously you can make any kinds of terrain for, for scattered terrain that you want. Being it's all this is a talent game show, we're gonna kind of uh, uh, shill our own stuff here a little bit. but. Uh, when we did the third Kickstarter, one of the things I wanted to do to add value to it and that I knew that would be a big add-on afterwards was terrain. Uh, plastic is, is the perfect vehicle to put terrain in. It makes it, uh, it's really where it's at its best. Um, it's easy to do. It makes it a lot cheaper. It, you can do some bigger pieces, some stuff that, you know, there's no way we could do some of this stuff in metal or even resin. I mean, resin castings would be pretty expensive. So um, I think I've got pretty much everything out here that was in the Kickstarter. I might've missed a couple of people. I think there's a couple of things I'm missing, but we'll just kind of go down the list and, and kind of talk a little bit about how they interact in the game. Um, a lot of this stuff was based upon some of the um, battlefield specialization stuff in the back support assets. So you'll see some stuff that kind of goes along with that as well. Um, some of it's just to look cool. Some of it's to, 
to, to write into a scenario to use them as an objective or whatnot. Um, we did scale these to our line, the 10 millimeter line. So everything is uh, 10 millimeter in scale, uh, elevation wise and so forth. Still, we, you know, we worked on our elevations one, two, and three. Uh, so that's kind of how all that got put together. Um, but some of the pieces that we've got here, uh, we have dragon's teeth. Uh, these come combined. There's there's uh, one of them that's got a couple of damaged ones in it, plus the regular ones. Um, we'll kind of talk to about how you can kind of paint these up because the, the the bases come textured uh, for them. And basically, these are uh, anti-vehicle. Um, Obstacles, uh, kind of like your minefields that can be placed in places to keep the vehicles in. Um, depending on how you want to set them up, uh, especially if you have them deeper, uh, you could also, it could become an anti-cav um, obstacle as well. Uh, generally, I would think with them in the individual uh, row or whatever that they could step over them, but, uh, uh, or be able to kind of pick their way through them. It might slow them down anyway. Um, we did, design these these big pteropods or whatever uh these are designed more for uh anti-cav uh they're obviously larger closer together um you can they they come individually so you don't even have to put them on the base so if you want to take a bunch of them and make a big circle of them or something like that you can um so a lot of a lot of things that you can do there uh, speaking of minefields, um, we do have minefield counters. Um, generally in the game, most minefields are six foot circles or area. Um, so, you know, these can kind of be uh, your central point for where the mines are. Um, if you have a bunch of them, you can lay them all together. You know, with the, these are two inch circles. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to, you could put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, and be able to um, uh, make a big circle if you wanted to do that. Generally, I uh, just kind of put a circle, a template down, and put one of these in the middle. All these packs, too, are multi-pack, so um, I don't have the exact count. So each pack has several, or two or three at least, of, of, the, of the pieces that go in there. Um, for the most part, I think maybe a couple of the, tower, the storage containers because of their size. But uh, I think there might, might be two in each of them. Anyway, so next up after that, working in the, more of the area of, we have debris. These are made up of, that's totally up to you, Gimli, how you want to set it up. Um, again, they're, they're kind of scenario specific. So, you know, you could have preset ones that are already on the board. Uh, that would be more to control the, you know, even as you're just running a scenario and you, you've got an area you don't necessarily want them to go down, uh, you can put mines down there. And then if they really want to, then more power to them. But again, it's it's how you want to play it. So, uh, but the debris, the, these are made up of boulders, concrete, uh, girders, stuff like that. Um, they, these are good to use for if you've got a building, if you've got destroyed a building and you want to set them down, or you can scatter them around a city um, a little bit. Um, you can also, if you want to have a bigger piece or something like that, you know, you can cut you a, a bigger piece of MDF board or something like that and, and put this in there and then model up around the edges and kind of include it in, into that. Um, more in the obstacle way, we've got uh little k rails these come in little uh racks of six that you can um cut up and and set them around or however you want to do they're good for cover for infantry things like that um we have storage containers both small and large Again, nice obstacles, they, you can stack them up if you want to, make all kinds of neat things with them. Um, if you watched any of the game from Cavcon and the city board, um, I had a few of them on there, but a lot of them were P-51 
pieces of plywood that I cut up a long time ago that we used. Um, you can do lots of really cool setups with shipping containers, lots of mazes and, and whatnot. Um, kind of in the 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 uh, objective uh, market is we have an ammo uh, stand. And again, all these are separate from the base, so you don't have to glue them on. If you, they, I think this comes in three different parts. So you can use them in different things, add them on to something, you know, lots of different things you can do with them. Same thing, we have barrels. Um, these two racks are separate. I think this one's molded on there. Um, it's got kind of a funny top to it because of the way it came out of the mold. But if you just kind of cut that down flat a little bit, it works out good there. It's all there. It just needs cut down a little bit. Um, also, oh, going back to the mines, if you'll if you'll notice in the um, uh, section in the book where they're talking about battlefield assets, there's the volcano mines, which are designed to take out aircraft that go over. I thought those were kind of cool. Shoot up into the air rather than have somebody go on it. Um, some of the stuff for cover, these are uh, uh, like a vehicle revetment so that you could have a tank pull in there and be able to go haul down. Um, those are from the battlefield upgrade. Uh, you have this sandbag emplacement. So if you want to have infantry weapons or something in there, guys, um, you can have them in there. I'll show you how they all scale here in just a second after I go over them. Um, first, we have storage containers. Uh, we've got the small, medium, and large. Uh, they're based upon their elevation level, one, two, and three. Uh, another objective is a power generator. Uh, we have bunkers that you can get plain, or, or they, you can also buy uh, turrets for them. And we have like a MAC gun, lasers, or particle bolt guns. We've got a rocket pod and a missile pod, too, that goes on them. And then, of course, how can you have scatter train if you don't have wrecks? So there are, uh, there's a package of CAV um, wrecks, which there are three different ones. Uh, then there's one, just one uh, aircraft one and one vehicle one um, that you can either set out on the field to use for rubble or something like that, or you can paint them up and use them for something that dies uh, during the game. And then uh, um, I think that covers some of the basic stuff that we have. There's two or three of them that we don't have here, but um, but you can see here's here's like a Thunderbird. Uh, here's a Sovereign 3 from Kickstarter 3. Uh, we have a Falcon. A couple of tanks from Kickstarter 3. But you can see everything scales good. Uh, it goes along with the piece. Um, you want to have your little infantry guys in there. You have your little little mortar setups, and these are the new uh, heavy infantry figures. By the way, if you haven't seen them yet. These are the, the, we came out with these a couple of months ago. Run away, run away, look out for the big calves. I was horrible as a, when I was young playing army men. I had all my different little voices for everybody. Well, we, we have light infantry and, and powered armor and heavy. Um, the light infantry and the powered armor we've had for quite a while. Uh, and down the road, we want to do some updates on those and come out with some new ones. But the heavy infantry is the first thing that we've done from uh, scratch. Here's even, there was, I forgot that wasn't glued on. 
maybe, maybe you'll get it on. But here's a spatha. If you've got one coming in your order from the con, see how it kind of scales in there. Yeah, infantry is a lot of fun. I mean, you don't want to have a lot of it on the board because it can slow the game down. Um, the nice thing, because they're all individual, so you can mix and match them, you know, if you want, you know, you can make one stand and put your SAM launcher on it and put a couple of guys with rifles, and that way you know what it's a heavy weapon stand and whatnot. Um, mortars, the mortar stands, things like that, you can, you can mix and match. There's officers in there with pistols, stuff like that. I think the, these, the new heavy weapon teams, uh, mortar teams has a guy with a little uh, tablet that he's looking at, like he's taking coordinates or whatever. They, uh, they, they, they turned out really good at, at this size. When you look at them on the, um, uh, I need to get some pictures up there of them painted and, and actually being used. Because when you look at them on the um, website, of course, everything's blown up. And you look at them and you go, oh, those are kind of weird looking shapes. But when they're actually it's in the right size and down on the board and everything like that, they it make a lot more sense with the way they look. All right, any questions? Get a drink here right quick and... I'm going to show you a couple little, we're going to paint on them a little bit, and then, and then we'll get to our MDF building. All right. The nice thing about this stuff too is it's easy to paint. There is no right, wrong. There's no, you know, this is stuff that's damaged, blown up, out on the ground. Um, you know, anything that you want it to be. Um, all, all, anything that has the ground has some texture in it. Uh, you know, so that makes it a little better for catching paint. Especially if you just want to do some quick washes on them or something like that. So, all right, let's move some of this out of the way here. So you'll be able to see what we're working on. Surround our square here. So many projects, so little time. Isn't that the story of a, of a war gamer's life? Always got stuff to do and never enough time to do it. God forbid you grow up. Kids, family. You're like, where did all my free time go? I mean, you wouldn't trade it, but it is. Not the same as when I was 25 years old, for sure. Back then, a good Saturday was... A game of war gaming or role playing at night and pizza and a couple of beers. Okay, so let's start off here. We've got um, this is the uh, sandbag emplacement, and what this actually is is. Uh, a little harder to see, but you can always, <laughs> that is true. You can use them for a little labor. Um, but it has some armor plates that they've set up on the inside and then put the sandbags on the outside to kind of lean against them. But when you look inside here, there's some sandbags down on the, the ground that's fallen off. There's a couple of ammo boxes. So some cool stuff there. Um, so we're going to start, we're going to put down a little, a little bit of brown here. Let's see, some dark brown, somewhat dark brown. Let's 
Well, Gimli, congratulations, but you got a long way to go. Mine are 25, 22, 20, 18. <laughs> There's four of them. All right, we're going to go with a little bit of what they call Kabold scale. It's a little darker brown. It's one of the newer Reaper Bones paints that's out. Which, by the way, we carry all the Bones paints at the Talon Games site. Um, I think regular price on them are like three sixty nine, so we sell them for two ninety nine a bottle. And uh, every for every five bottles you buy, you get a six bottle for free. So, and that's also figured into all the Cav sets, which are all six color sets. So they're basically five you six for the price of five. So. Yeah, you're not the only one. We sold a crap load of paint. Um, the last orders that had to go out today all were having to be held up because of paint. Um, we went through so much of it. And uh, finally got it uh, all in today from the factory. And everybody's order went out. All right, so to start off with, I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna kinda of try to get into the ground a little bit. I'm not gonna to be too worried about some of it because I can always come back and, but I just wanted to kind of show you how the, the, uh, It's a little more red or brown than I wanted, or a little, a little more red in it, but that's all right. For what we're going to do with it, it'll be okay. Probably in all actuality, if I was doing this with all my stuff spread out, I would probably just airbrush this whole thing brown and then come back and pick out the, the details. But, and I don't know how well it shows on the camera, but the ground's got a whole lot of texture to it and it was some little rocks and like I said, it, it just makes it really easy to catch, catch the paint and, and when it's all done, make it look more unique than just a something in there all right so i'll let that dry for a minute we'll start on another one um here's another thing too um especially if you're building like a big trench system and you need lots and lots of uh sandbags a cool little thing to do is there's there's sculpty, uh, which is a, a kind of a clay that you can bake in the oven to get it hard. Uh, but you can you can take like an old uh, pie plate or a, a you know pizza pan or whatever and uh, roll it out. Um, how thick you want it, you know, probably 16th of an inch, probably or maybe a millimeter thick. I wouldn't go any, any much so than that. It doesn't really shrink, but you can, um, roll it out and basically you get kind of a flat shape like that. Then come in with a knife. Um, and if you really want to get picky about it, you can use a ruler. I don't use it since sandbags kind of have an irregular look to them anyway. But you come in there and you cut strips in the width of the sandbags, whatever, whatever width you're going for. 
like so. Then you can come in here and, and then cut them this way for how, how long you want each one of them to be. The cool thing here is when you make this, this cross cut, these, these corners kind of stick to the blade a little bit. So when they, after they're cut, you get a shape kind of like this. So it almost looks like a little sandbag. And it, what's really cool too then, if you want to, you can take a, 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 a little piece of uh, like uh, gauze or something like that and lay it on top of there and then just kind of press it just a little bit to put that pattern in there if you want to kind of get that canvas look to it. And then you just leave them on that tray and you stick them in the um, oven at the temperature. I think it's like 300 degrees or something like that. Um, and it doesn't take very long because they're so thin. Uh, but they actually will, especially if you use like the white, um, they start turning kind of a tan colored, which is great for sandbags. Uh, and then you can, um, you can come back in and, and uh, paint them and dry brush them or, and, and then you just stack them up. Oh, it's like building with Legos. You just make your first row and then offset the next one on top of it and stack them up just like you see sandbags. So it's, it's, uh, you can make, I, I've made entire tunnel or trench systems with those. I, I've made those by the hundreds, thousands. This is a, a mine one here. We're going to put a little brown on it to let it get started. At some point, at some time in my 30 plus years of doing this, if there is something that needed to be built for a board, I've built it. There's probably very few things that you could ask me that I haven't built a version of. Hi, Tiger. How are you doing? One of my future shows, uh, maybe even next week if I can get around everything ready for it, is I'm going to show you how to make a really cool, um, you know, you watch... Uh, you watched any kind of sci-fi movie or something where they come to a new planet and especially sand or something like that, you know, in the original star Wars episode four, you know, you see the, the bones of the crate dragon up on top of the hilltop. Well, I'm going to show you how to take one of Reaper's bones dragons. Um, the, the, I think it's Cali, which I don't know, whichever the bone one is, the smaller version that they have. And I'm going to show you how to take that and make a really cool piece to put on your board. That's on my project list. I built one one time, but I uh, actually Chris Lewis helped me on it. And we ended up, we made the whole thing out, the whole dragon out of Sculpty, wire and Sculpty. Um, but I want to make one with the... Uh, and I'll show you it when I when I start on it, but I want to kind of show you how uh, you can take and do something a lot quicker. This was the reason I really, really like the bones paint is it's nice and thick. It's great for base coating. The, the the master series paint is really good too, but it's more of a blending and dry, dry brush, uh, airbrush type paint more so. I mean, you can, and I airbrush with this all the time, you just have to thin it down a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I still got him every time I bring him out, everybody, how cool that is. I'm like, you know, I saw that model kit at Reaper one time and, and uh, I'm like, that's basically what we built, uh, even with more detail and stuff. So I want to show everybody how to build one for their own.
Well, luckily, one of my painters is doing me a whole set, um, but it was, they didn't quite have it ready yet, so can't show off all the painted stuff, but we will get there. I think I am going to... Yeah, yeah, we had to move the bones a little around so that the so that the calves could walk through the through the through the bones. I'm gonna glue this to a popsicle stick. I like paint on popsicle holding paint. But it dries quick and they're easy to break off. But that way I don't get so much stuff on me. All right, what is something else here that we can paint up? Oh, here we can do we can do some of this debris here. Oh, got a little fuzz on it. Let's see, you got a dark gray somewhere here. This has lots of uh, rock and busted up concrete in it. I moved my mat a little bit further out. It's I'm forgetting where I'm at sometimes here. Everybody can see. That's the best thing about terrain too is you don't have to be, it's not like you're painting faces or stuff. Just kind of slop it on there because we'll cover the extra up later. So what is everybody's, uh, what big movie is everybody looking forward to? I don't know. We don't have any movies yet open around here, but uh, so just stuff that's been coming on the TV. But what, when the, when it's safe to kind of go back again, what's going to be, what's the big one you're looking at to go see at the, at the movie theater? I know I have one, so, but I'll wait to see. I don't want to. Uh, yeah, new, the new James Bond. I definitely want to see it. I don't know that that's the one I, my first one in the theaters that I want to see. Uh, well, my big pick is I want to see Dune. I think that the new version of Dune is going to be El Primo.
I swore up and down I was going to make sure. Uh... Oh, no, no, no. No, they're, hold, they're holding on to it. They're delaying the release until. Yeah, they're not going to let that big movie go to video on demand. I've got, I've got, kind of got a hankering to see the new Wonder Woman too, but my first, if I had to pick and both of them were on, Dune would be the first one for me to go, to go see. All right, so we got a little rock there a little bit. But to kind of give you an idea of some of the texture here, let's take, let's see here. Surely we have some kind of a, well, what I did with my brown. Okay, well, well, we'll do this a little different then. I thought I had a brown, some brown ink here, but. So we're going to make a little bit of a wash and do it that way. Because I want you to be able to see the. Possibly. Take a little of the brown, just a little bit of darkness to it there, a little bit. All right, this is kind of a quick one, but you can see. Hopefully. It's more of a of a sand. <laughs> than an actual But hopefully you can kind of see the the texture a little better that shows up in the in the piece. All right, so since I don't have any brown ink with me. We got some black, a little black on here. Pretty potent stuff, so we'll. And take a whole lot of. But we'll go back here on our dirt a little bit. Get the 
kind of a quick and But if I if I could go in here and even on the places that I haven't done yet, this black will really help help you see the detail that's on it. Like so. Your trusty oh, all the time shadow, a little black. Goes everywhere. Looks really good on the gray. It's probably not as dry as I normally would let it to be, but we're kind of. Kind of getting down and dirty with it a little there. All right, I'm going to go back here and we can paint our with a little bigger brush on this one. Possibly. Okay, maybe I don't have a bigger brush. That's okay. This is uh, the bunker. We're going to paint up some of it. Uh, Nice thing about these bunkers, they, they've got a lot of inset detail on them. Kind of World War II-ish kind of. And they're hollow, so if you want to put little counters or something underneath them, you can. Put guys inside of it, a little sneaky and sneaky. All right, so we'll let those dry right quick and we'll try to put a little dry brush on them and All right, what do we got here? We got anything getting sort of dry, sort of kind of? All right, so we're going to get our little dry brush brush here. A little light color. A 
that's another good thing when you're dealing with alien worlds. There, there is no wrong color combination. <laughs> Sometimes the wilder you get with it, the better. This is not going to be the best dry brush because it's not totally dry, so it's going to kind of mix a little bit, but. But it kind of helps show the detail a little bit. Then the, at this point, you can go in and, and put, um, I thought I brought some flocking up here with me, but apparently I didn't. I right, set it somewhere that I don't see. But you can go in and, and uh, put a little green grass. You can put little tufts for little bushes. Um, Lots of different things you can you can just go in and put uh, a little bit of green paint um, too if you want just little little specks of got a little meadow green here. There's a, there like I said there's enough uh, detail on these that uh, you can really pick it up a little bit and. You want to come in and just kind of do some on some of the rough spots there. And then, uh, let's see, do we have a lighter gray? But there's little rocks in here too, so you can go in and we'll pick out the rocks. So lots of things you can do with them. All right. Any questions? Have I have I put everybody to sleep or are you just that enthralled? Oh, all right. So we'll let those dry for a minute. You can kind of we'll answer any questions while I take a stool break here. Is these that is my project for next week is to have new stools. Trudeau, I see that you have dropped in. Um, I need to get your shipping information for your prizes. So make sure tonight or tomorrow, email us at C-U-S-T-S-E-R-V, that's short for customer service, C-U-S-T-S-E-R-V, at talon-games.com, please. And we will get, get your prizes out to you. I was hoping that you might show up tonight.
You're my last. You're my last one. There, there's just there's endless projects that you can do with this thing, um, with these pieces. Like I said, you can incorporate them into a bigger piece. You can use a little green stuff, a little bit of wood paste, uh, all kinds of things that you can use them to, to tie them into other things. And lots, lots, and lots of variations. Okay, so that kind of shows a little bit on scatter terrain, and we'll do some more. Right now, I'm just kind of going over some real basics, and then as we go a little further into this and I get a better idea of what people are looking for, uh, we'll do some more uh, project-orientated stuff that people can either uh, follow along. We'll kind of talk about it before the show uh, if you want to start kind of get you a parts list. And uh, you can kind of see what we're doing. All right, so let's finish putting together our Tyrell bu building. <clears throat> Last week I got the started on the base floor, um, so I got to put the other sides on. So that's my my next project here. I think these are offset just a little bit in order to let them go on easier. So you want to make sure you got a wide wide to a narrow. These are uh, TT combat buildings, 10 millimeter scale buildings that we stock. Uh, they're from England. Um, we are slowly, uh, not necessarily slowly because there's not very many left, uh, but we are discontinuing them as far as selling them because uh, we are getting ready to do our own um, MDF line of buildings that I'm very excited about that hopefully we'll have something soon to show. We're trying to, you know, kind of get something that's unique. Some things that are kind of cab inspired. Um, All right, let's see if this one will go on a little easier than the first one. They do a really nice job. I'll give them that of, I mean, they're... They are precise. They are on, on target for everything to fit together nice. Angles suck to do in MDF because you've got flat edges. But I don't know if you can see there um, how tight that goes together. I mean, I, I didn't even hardly have to, to work at it all to push it together. It just It's right there, locked right into place. Very nice. I wish that they did more stuff that would be more related to what we do, or I wouldn't have messed with uh, getting into the terrain business, but so much of their stuff is very um, 40K orientated or uh, dropship zone commander, which kind of has a I don't know, a 20s, 30s kind of feel to the buildings and stuff. So not really my cup of tea. Hmm. 
not that I'm a perfectionist or anything, but I may have a little OCD type qualities. So I, I kind of like my stuff to look. And I like the game I'm playing. Some of their 40K stuff is not too bad if you, if you leave the skulls and everything off of it. And I guess in the right scenario, you can write it into your your fight however you want it. Hold that for a second. Let it let the glue hook to it a little bit. I think, I'm not sure, anybody noticed? I, did we get over 100 followers yet? I know we were getting pretty close. We need to do, we need to do something special. If we have, I'll, it'll be kind of late, but if we haven't, maybe I can come up with something. I had to do so much catch up in the last week. I didn't even get to work on my, my calf races for tomorrow night, so we'll have to put that off for another week. Sometimes too, if I can get to it, I don't. I like putting just a little bit of glue in the crack. This stuff especially, um, you don't want to go too thick with it, but because it'll start running. But it, it sets up so fast, and it dries clear that it. Uh, gives it a little extra. support, especially if when you're moving it around and chopping a lot with it and stuff. But you don't want it balled up on there or it will uh, just soak right down. And you'll go, where did my glue go? Hot glue. Oh my gosh, here goes the last piece on the bottom. Well, not really the last piece, but at least the main, the main uh, floor pieces. It's got, it's got a bunch of little trim pieces that go on it. This one's going to be a little trickier because one, one goes on the outside and one goes on the inside. If you plan on joining us tomorrow for our regular CAV talk, we are going to explore a couple of ideas that we really haven't talked a whole lot about that I think would be cool for people that are writing, uh, putting scenarios together. But did you know that there are more alien races than just the five that we have? They are not, uh, they are sub-light races or more primitive. Um, they, some of them have been captured, conquered. They have single planets and have been taken over by some of the other guys. But we're going to talk about those a little bit. Well, they're not, they're not necessarily playable in the sense that they are a faction, but from a story standpoint and scenario standpoint, you'll see them show up, but there are other human ra humanoid races in the game, and we will be talking about those tomorrow. All right, this one's always the last one.
Always wants to be tricky. As the as the main races went out into space, they stumbled across other that, like I said, that were not uh, to the point where they were ready to go into space yet. So some of them have left and traveled into the, and you see them around on some of the other worlds, but. Let's see if this one's gonna just a little bit of play in it there. I knew that would pique your interest, Tiger. What is Cow Boss up to now? All right, I think we about got this baby whooped here. Sorry, I got to go off camera sometimes with this, just so I can get a, the right angle on it. All right, so I think... There is our floor for the bottom of the Tyrell Tower. And just when you think you're done, <laughs> time for more pieces. No, not more pieces, please. Right, and we can find them all here. And I need one, two, three, four, sixteen of these dudes. Ah. Try to cut them out a little bit. Just a little stick to them. Hopefully there's a sheet here with a bunch of them on it. Looking good for the home team at the moment here. Here we go. You guys are awfully quiet tonight. If we have any hockey fans, uh, well, there's a somebody that we need to ban, huh? Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Our first one. Uh, 
Oh, well, I can understand that. Babies always take uh, preference. But anyway, as I was saying, in relation to our the hockey, my Dallas Stars are in the Stanley Cup Finals. I don't know if it's as impressive this year since it's a shorter year, but they did win all their playoff. Oh, I got one that's being overly stubborn. Come out of there. There we go. These are the ones I hate when they're so repetitive over and over and over. Usually I like using a um, utility knife to do those or to cut these out with if I need them. You can always count on somebody to try to mess something up, you know? Can't just let stuff be the way it is. You got to try to come in and shield your... I guess we should be lucky we didn't get any kind of porn pictures, or unlucky, depending on how you want to look at it. I can set it so that uh, followers only can post. I just hate to do that because I don't want to make you follow if you want to come in and you've got something that you want to say. Maybe you just here for one time or maybe I've done you wrong at a game tournament at some point in the past and it's time for you to have your revenge. Back in the day when Battletech tournaments were still a big deal at the Gen Con and Origins, I used to play in those a whole bunch. And uh, I don't think that I'm, I guess as I've got older, I've become a little more of a nerd, game nerd, which is not a bad thing. But when I was younger, I was, you know, I... Gaming was not my life, but when we'd go to the show, I'd enjoy it because I did enjoy the game. And uh, there's some characters that was at the, the tournaments. I will mention no names that a uh, little, little rough to have to play with. Not my cup of tea. That's really, I kind of got out of the the whole tournament side of things because of stuff like that. I just, those type of personalities and me did not get along well. So I'm not saying that I was ever escorted out of the building, <laughs> but there might've been once or twice. I don't, I don't like rude people. And now that I've got my own game that I support, I love going to the shows when Somebody comes up and tells me how horrible my game is and what I should have done to fix it. 
Those are always fun. But with age comes temperance and patience. So I do better. Now we're going to spend two hours cutting these freaking pieces out. I guess in the future when I build a building, I will have all the pieces already cut out. <laughs> all right. Four. Six, eight, nine, ten. We have sixteen. Yay. Oh. That's here. And like I said, I remembered sandpaper this time, so I can get rid of the little dibbits. Make everything go together a little easier. Luckily, MDF, which is basically just cardboard, sands very quickly. Not sure what's on the dinner menu tonight. Miss Cow Boss brought tacos out for lunch today. So the conditions for Taco Tuesday have been met. I've been back playing uh, Civilization V a little bit on the computer. The Civilization RTS games and stuff like that are my Achilles heel. I'm really glad they're remodeling, redoing AG Empires. Me and Miss Cab Boss used to play that all the time when we were very first married. Very enjoyable. I used to, just with everybody being so busy, uh, me and uh, Ed, that owns Reaper Miniatures, we used to play those kind of games all the time. And we would be at his house playing. And uh, we'd be, have our backs to each other. And rather, we would still be uh, texting each other on Messenger. <laughs> used to drive his wife crazy. She's like, are you guys really sitting two feet away from each other and you're messaging each other? <laughs> well, yeah. What's wrong with that? If we were at our houses, that's the way we'd be playing. It's very addictive. It can be. I like the I like it the fact that it's been out long enough that they it's much more stable and newer computers run it like crazy. So I've got Civ Six too, but I haven't played any of it yet. But pretty pretty much, uh, I, my definition of a perfect game. So oh, I, I love all the Civ games. All right, so these all go. Up. And flat. Like so. So let's see, best way to put these in there. And hopefully it all doesn't come flying apart. Do 
you get a little glue that comes out. Just have, if you got something you can go down the crack with a little bit, usually it'll take care of that for you. We got a little way to go. It's being, being kind of hard. Sure. Just have to get a little leverage on it. There we go. All right. We got to build these all the way around here. It would have been nice if they put that on that side of the where you push the other ones through to hide those. Maybe something goes over. Get in there. I get for bragging about them being so good about going together. <laughs> All right, then they have a piece that goes on the outside of them. So we can go ahead and put one on so you can see how that looks so that we get something accomplished maybe if we can find them Uh, you are exactly correct. There is nothing better to figure out how people are doing joints than do take the ones that people have already done. <laughs> what works and what doesn't work. I just, the, and, and this isn't so much a tutorial in the sense, it's just I want people to be more comfortable. You, sometimes they look at some of these kits and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, what do I have to do to, to put something like that together. And it's really not, they're not complicated at all. So it's just, I want people to be more comfortable with them. So especially when we start doing them. So that people will, will want them. I figure that if I have the patience to do one of these, you have the patience to do one of these. So. Plus, we'll be able to paint them up and have them for our game board later. I hope I didn't put that on backwards. No. I think it's all right. They just kind of look like they stick out the bottom a little bit, but I think that's just the angle. Of 
Well, folks, I think I'm going to shut her down a little early tonight. It's been a long, hot day, and I know that there's probably better things to do than to watch me put the building together. So if you have any questions, comments, this would be the time to get them in before I call it a night. And then I will be back tomorrow at 8 o'clock Central Time, and we will talk all things CAV, as we are wont to do on a Wednesday night. And then we got Chris Lewis back on Saturday working on the Kodiak. All right. They've got the super tight. <laughs> Might not have hurt to make that holes a little bit bigger, guys. Oh, oh, there it goes. Ever so slowly. The problem, I'm you get worried that you're going to break something you already put together. Possibly. All right, I'll work on that in a little bit. That way, if I break it, you don't have to listen to me cussing. So anyway, it's 730. I'm going to call it a night. We'll uh, look at getting started on a new project next Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to try to get to the uh, land dragon thingy I was talking about. So everybody, good night. As always. Leave a message on my fa on the Facebook if there's something you want to see us working on. And we will go from there. So everybody have a good night. Thank you.